Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aiken and on this show each week we take a look at some upcoming races in Hong Kong and try to isolate an angle to the race that might be a path to finding the winner. Well, Sha Tin on Sunday, the first race we're going to take a look at is race three, where our winning factor is the sectionals. Now this is uh, class four, 1400 metres, and while I'm sure there will be arguments made for more than three runners, I think the key players here are Great Spirit for Karis Teton and Dennis Yip, winning gold for Keegan DeMello and Chris So, and David Hayes trained Young Horizon with champion jockey Zach Purton aboard. And the reason I've settled on these three as the key players is they've been able to do something a bit special at the end of their races lately. So let's take a look at what they've been able to do. Firstly, Great Spirit. Now this is going back into February, race 428, gate two, mauve and grey colours. And Great Spirit jumps almost too well, but Karis Teton wants to settle him in behind here and that suits in a pace that is quite genuine. He travels well behind midfield and you can see turning for home he does take a little winding up but with the leaders slowing down Great Spirit runs on strongly in the final stages to go down by only half a length. Now that was an excellent race course uh, debut from Great Spirit. Uh, he was uh, one of the top finishing sectionals of the day which is a good thing to note for a horse having his first start and clearly a horse looking for uh, running over further. Well, he did run further at his next start, but only because he was caught wide all the way from gate 11, and we're overlooking that run. He comes back to a better draw now. In that race, uh, back in the field, uh, winning gold was also running a, a good sectional, despite being caught wide, but he was able to do even better at his race since. This is race 523, and winning gold is in gate 11, white, red and blue colours and jumps okay, but the initial pace inside him is too fast and he has to drift back. Now the leaders do knock off through the middle of the race here and take a rest. That allows uh, Keegan DeMello to track up wide with cover, but then there's a sprint again from the 400 metres and they get away before winning gold is very strong to the line in third over the closing stages. Now, well, both of those replays were from Class 4s, but Young Horizon, he's emerging now from Class 5, where he's also been hitting the line with plenty of zest. This is race 541, he's black with white sleeves, gate 6. Young Horizon jumps okay, but there are others keen to go faster, and when he settles down for Zach Purton, he's a fair way off the lead tempo, but the rider on the front runner helps him out slowing them down on the circle, allowing Young Horizon to make up ground without much effort, even if he does have to come out three wide to stay off the heels coming back at him. Then it's a sprint down the straight, and this is where Young Horizon is very good and much too strong. Now we don't always see class five horses making the list of the top 10 finishers on a card, but that was the case there with Young Horizon, and that gives extra confidence he'll manage the rising grade and so do the statistics. As you know, if you watch this show regularly, uh, up in class, winners are something I'm confident about anyway. We're always looking closely at those horses as winning prospects, and this is why. These are the figures since uh, September 2013, and this is a very consistent area to be able to find winners. As you see, the biggest positives are on those progressive horses from class four to class three, or class three to class two but even the much maligned class five winners have a great record going up in class. Now I hear you saying a great finish won't help much if a horse has too much to do in the stretch, and I'm hearing you. And that's why we look at race maps. So when we go to the map for this event, I think we'll get a decent tempo in this with a couple of likely leaders drawn wide. Although it's possible all three of the horses we're looking at, winning gold, great spirit and young horizon, could be coming from the same part of midfield with their finishers. Uh, we have often seen Young Brilliant handier at times than he was in that replay. So he may have an edge on the other two. So the tip from me in race three, Young Horizon. His winning factor, the sectionals. 
Now we have three horses producing big finishing sectionals lately, but Young Horizon also has the added benefit of being a winner up in class, and he might have a tactical edge as well. The second race we're going to take a look at is race eight, and our winning factor here, Stallion Power. Now this is a 1200 metre class two, and that distance is a crucial point for a couple of these runners. I think there'll be cases made for a number in the small field, but for me, the players are Raging Blizzard looking for three straight, Lucky Encounter and Supreme Lucky both coming back from 1400 metres, and Gorgeous Win, who had some excuses at his last start. Now these are some talented, mostly lightly raced uh, horses, uh, getting some weight off the horses up the top, who've already established themselves, and that's why I'm focusing on them. But I'm zeroing in on two in particular, Raging Blizzard coming here off good form at uh, Happy Valley, but he also has a good record at Chartin, and Supreme Lucky, who might appreciate a return to 1200 metres. So let's have a look at what they've been doing. First of all, race 499, he's the obvious one, gate three, blue and yellow colour, Raging Blizzard, and uh, one of the first out, but Zach Purton here lets a couple of the speedier ones go, and this turns out an easy watch for favourite backers this night. He's camped comfortably behind at just an average pace, then puts them away comprehensively in a strong sprint down the straight. Now for Supreme Lucky, I think for his reference point, we need to go all the way back to the first day of the current season, the last time we saw him over 1200 metres. This is race nine, he's in green colours, gate seven, and Zach Purton aboard is at work on Supreme Lucky early in a race where tactics look vital and he wants the favourite forward, even though that is not this horse's usual style. He's under a big handicap here in class three, Supreme Lucky, and asserts himself to get the front. He's able to get a break mid-race and then proves too strong in the run down the straight, despite being ridden upside down. Effective, yes. Impressive, certainly not. But I think there were extenuating circumstances, as I pointed out. And since then, he's been tried at a couple of different distances without really being suited by either of them. Now he comes back to 1,200 metres, and when we take a look at the map for Sunday's race, uh, he gets a nice trip here from gate one. I'd be surprised if he was anywhere near the lead this time, with speed horses like Drombeg Banner and Lucky Encounter engaged, and Matthew Poon more likely settles him looking to finish the race off, more the style that he's known for. While Zach Purton, he's got a slightly stickier gait than at Happy Valley on Raging Blizzard, and we'll have to make some decisions based on the tempo, but we've seen this horse has some tactical prowess. But this is also a chance for a bit of a statistical detour, something uh, we don't uh, normally look at, and that is breeding. Supreme Lucky is by Deep Field and Raging Blizzard by Per Encanto and those are the two winningest stallions in Hong Kong in recent times as you can see here. Now as I confess this isn't something I look at much. Stallion stats are for the sale ring rather than the race course but I have had inquiries about the best stallions to follow in Hong Kong and here it is. These are the top 20 since September 2020 ranked by a number of wins and Deep Field is at the top but I've highlighted four others who are doing a better job on strike rate, and certainly when it comes to outrunning the market expectations, something we want as punters. And there's Per Encanto, right at the top on every metric. But the tip from me in race eight is Raging Blizzard. His winning factor, Stallion Power. A Little bit of a different uh, winning factor, that one. Not one we would normally look at, and I, I think this horse stands out on form anyway. But having a stallion like Per Encanto in our corner, certainly not a negative. Well, that's it from the winning factor this week. Good luck on Sunday. We'll see you next time.